back fishes. So now that you get your banjo minnow rigged, now you have to know how to fish it. It's totally different than anything you've ever done before, and Chance is going to show you all the four ways. Yeah, so fishing the banjo is definitely different than the traditional way you fished. Mm -hmm. And what I found is it's a twitch and die action. But there's four main techniques. The first two actually are kind of subsurface, up on the surface, and then we drop it low for the next two. Okay. Um, but the first one is, I like to call it the escaping minnow pretty self-explanatory. It's an escaping bait fish on the surface of the water. And so it's jerking across the top. It's skipping just like a normal bait fish. We've all seen that when, when shatter in the water or bait fish and they're being chased and they're skipping over the top. Yeah, and this, and is, a what it's duplicating. Yeah, this is a fast retrieve. And right. this is typically going to be for hungry, active fish. The momentum of the fish is going to stay on the surface of right. the water because you're twitching it in and reeling in that slack so quickly. You're never going to notice any slack in it. Swimming minnow is going to be very similar to that first, except you're going to be a little bit slower. So you're going to twitch it and pause a little bit more often. And what I like to think about when I'm actually fishing is, you're looking at the rod tip, mm -hmm. and you're twitching it, and reeling in that slack, and you're just wiggling that rod tip back and right. forth. This is going to be a technique that, at the times that the bite is hot, you're going to want to use these two. And what I actually like to do is I like to start, whenever I'm throwing the banjo minnow, I always start fast and high. Mm -hmm. And then you drop it to low and slow. So the third and the fourth retrieve are genetic response retrieves. Genetic response is what happens when any predator fish sees a crippled or dying bait fish. Genetically, they cannot help themselves. And this is proven. This right. We're not making this up. Right. This is proven time and time again. So with the third retrieve, you simply cast it out let it sink a little bit, count a couple seconds to yourself, and you're gonna wiggle the rod tip a mm -hmm. couple times. I like to wiggle, 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 let it die. When you're wiggling it and then letting it die, you're causing slack in the line, and you right. want that. Traditionally, you're not used to right. having slack in the line. This is really important yeah, about the slack. Yeah, but keep your eye on that line because that is when the fish are gonna bite. You know, that takes us into the fourth retrieve, okay. and I like to call the fourth retrieve the dying minnow. Mm -hmm. Cast out the minnow and let it die. You're letting it die, meaning you're letting it sink. Count a couple seconds, count a few seconds to yourself, and then it's a single twitch. Think about a bait fish that is on its last leg of life. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be moving very much. It's going to be mostly dying. But there's that last little kick. <laughs> exactly. One twitch, and then let it die. I mean, I, I like to sometimes count, you know, four or five seconds in between the single twitch, and that's the key. The third one, you know, you're twitching a couple times. Yep. The last one, one twitch, and then let it die. Just remember, high and fast first, and then low and slow. That'll allow you to cover the bodies of as much water as you can. And then if that, you know, if you're not getting hits on that, just slow it down and bring it lower. And remember, you're never just reeling the, this minnow. That will kill the action. Right. You're always going to be jerking it and twitching it and letting it die. If you're in a situation where you've already determined that the fish are deep down deep, mm -hmm. what's a great way? You still don't. You still get the the life of the minnow, but what's a great way to? Yeah, what do what that? I've found to get this minnow a little bit lower in the water, a little bit quicker, is I like to take a nail, mm -hmm. you know, just like a finishing nail that we all have in our garage, mm -hmm. and just put it right below the anchor of the hook. You just gently push it in, because what that's going to do is it's barely going to go on the head of the fish, and you're still getting that lifelike action. But also because the weight's there. It's looking as though it's feeding. Similar to a drop shot, yeah. And there's right. so many different ways. And that's what, actually, I'm personally looking forward to all of our customers sending us their different ways that they've found success in it because there are so many different ways to right. fish. And, and, and that's what's special about the Banjo Minnow is we've designed this not just for professional fishermen mm -hmm. and pros. We've designed it for everybody. Yes, going out on the boat or being on the shore with your friends is great and your buddies and your dad or your, or your family, that's great. But it's a lot more fun when you're catching fish. Yeah. And, you know, that's what the banjo minnow does. It helps you increase your opportunities to catch more fish. Now you're having fun when you go out on those precious times that you have. Now that you know how to rig the banjo minnow and Chance has showed you how to fish it, now go catch fish. <laughs>